I designed drones for the Pentagon in the United States. I have one drone. The drone application is using all the Pentagon platforms. And you designed it? I designed it. What's going on, everybody? I'm here with a living legend. And if you don't know his name, you're about to find out exactly who Dr. Thomas Mensa is. He's known as the engineer who transformed and revolutionized the internet. He is an engineer who has 14 patents. Am I correct? 14 yes. patents and responsible for inventing the fiber optics that we rely upon today. Dr. Mensa, it is a pleasure. It's an honor uh, to have you here on Maximum Impact. And I'm, I am, you know, I'm almost speechless because I understand who you are and how you've influenced everything, all the technology that we have right in front of us, you have played a part in. So uh, tell me a little bit how you got started as a child in STEM technology during a time when STEM technology was not at the forefront of the industry. Jay, I'm excited to be on your show. Very excited. Because you have a very popular show. So I'm excited. Come and do two things. All right. Talk about The Rise of Comes in Black, which is my book. Okay. Talk about how we invented fiber optics. Jay, there are four of us hmm. that did the work. Three white Americans okay. and Dr. Thomas Mensah from Ghana. We created fiber optics. And so when you're sitting down, Jay, or anybody, sending pictures, you two pictures, sending pictures to Facebook, to any place, when you press send, and the picture is in China, it's because of us. Wow. When you press send in a few seconds, it's in South Africa, or it's even, even in Ghana. Yes. You know, or in America. It's because of what we did. Now, what was it like sitting down and coming up with fiber optics? Where, how did it even come to you, the, your mind, to do this? Because. Well, uh, that's a good question. As you know, first of all, uh, you mentioned my, 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 how did I start? My dad used to sit me on his lap and read to me newspapers. Hmm. So Jay, I was reading newspapers flawlessly at the age of four. At the age of four. You know, like what you do and all that in yes, newspapers? Yes, yes. My next door neighbor, Jay, came from Togo teaching French in Ghana. Hanging with him at eight years old, I was speaking French fluently. Hmm. Yes, listening to the radio and all. So that's how it started. And so when I went to a disco at the Sada College, a lot of famous people went there. The French were still watching me when I was there. You know, hey, this is a guy probably we can even send to France. Ah, okay. You know. So that you can buy Boeing, instead of Boeing, buy Airbus planes from us. Do the trial gravity test, the fast trains from us. So the French had, had their own reason mm -hmm. for, you know, watching me all the way till I went to KNUSC, Kwame Nkrumah University. The day I was graduating, Jay, the French said, this is a full scholarship, one-way ticket to France. Don't do side job, focus on your studies. So I went to France, Paris first, Montpellier University, where I was. That's where Airbus is. That's where, Air, okay, Airbus That's is there, okay. Airbus is in okay. Toulouse. Yeah, Toulouse, yeah. And so it was a big, and you know, opportunity you have to grab. It. You have to grab it. You have to grab oh, it. Oh, yeah. So I was working hard and I came on top. You know. But just before I finished, 
in France. My dad came to my mom told me and said, Hey, dog, when you come to Ghana, I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. But could a tie by a shampoo and all that don't come to Ghana yet? Go to the United States. That was the best advice I ever had. So because of what was going on, you were in France, and then there was a coup d'etat happening yes. here in Ghana. Yes. And then that's when your dad came, and he said, go to the U.S. Yes. And so you went to the U.S. Yes. All right, what happened next? Yeah. So I had a scholarship to U.S., you know, to go to MIT. MIT, okay. The top university, as you know. Yes. In the world, in engineering and sciences. So when I went to MIT, they got a call from Corning Glass Works where fiber optics was being developed. Can MIT send us one of your top engineers to help us, hmm. you know, get it out of their lab? And what year was this? Oh, I, I sit on the board at MIT even now. Okay. Yeah. And so I went to Corning Glassworks and they put me in charge of the program to take it out of the lab. So in 1985, 85. I had my first patent. So 1985, your first patent. Yes. And that was when you were at MIT wor yes. working with Corning Glassworks. Yes. Got it. So the patent was taking the invention out of the lab and putting it to commercialization. So my first patent allowed fiber optics to be made instead of two meters a second, to be made at 20 meters a second. Hmm. Industrial commercialization. I received Corning Glassworks Individual Outstanding Contributor Award from Corning. Because you were able to increase the speed yes. of the fiber optics yes. to 20 meters. 20 meters a second. Yeah, from two. Wow. That was a game changer. Yes, I'm, yes. Japan, the whole world. They were looking at, oh, wow, hey, Dr. Mensah, this is serious. So you told me competing with us in Japan, I said, man, we can't match that. So guess what? He stayed in the lab for 15 years, Jay. In one year, I solved the problem. Hmm. One year. So when you came on board, you solved the problem that they had been trying to solve for 15 years within one year. You did that well, within one I year. Did. What were, did you face any challenges? Because when I say this, recognizing 1985, around that time, did they have a lot of people who looked like you in that no, industry? I'm the only black person, hmm. African, Ghanaian. Yes, yes, yes. In charge of the program. In charge of the program. Yeah. White people working for me, reporting to me. How did that go? How, how did that work out for you? Yeah. They, they, they draw tower. Okay. So I four stories high. Cost five million dollars. I am in charge. In 1985. Yes. And my first patent, they filed it just like that. Fastest patent to be to receive by anybody. Really? I got it in six months. This is this is a a story that most people, again, like I said, they don't know. No. And they don't understand the influence uh, of those who have paved the way, because that's what you did. You paved yes. the way, because with that, with that first patent happening, and people, a lot of times, you know, people don't understand what patents are and how they work. So that was your first patent. You have 14 patents. Yes. So, Actually, in addition to that, I, I seven of the 14 patents were received in six years. So that's unheard of. Unheard of. So what made what you did so special and so unique that they would fast track these patents? Well, because number one, you come in, you know, I took video pictures of the applicator. Oh, okay. And I was studying it day and night. As I said, other than the bullet training gun, that's the hardest work I did. <laughs> Day and night. So, so God have prepared you yeah. for this. <laughs> so I'm working day and night. Chain the applicator. I said, watching it. I said, oh, that's the problem. The redistribution. 
of the coating around the glass, you know, mm -hmm. fiber optic is actually a glass wire. Okay. With coating on. But the distribution of the coating was not easy. I saw that in the videos. And that's how you, you and we designed the application. Okay. So that it's uniform. Okay. That's all the problem. So with that, you saw you're solving all of these problems. Yes. How did the and, and, and I don't know if this how you feel comfortable me asking this question. Did they compensate you properly for your work? Well, I would say yes. Okay, that, that's what I that's what I want to know. Because <laughs> we know it's business. Oh, I know. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I tell people, how did you develop Silicon Valley of Ghana? Hmm. I use all those finance funds in order to do that. To create Silicon Valley of Ghana. Wow. Now, for the young engineer that's coming along, because you see where it's happening. Like you talked about, well, I sent you a picture and it happened within seconds. And I realized that I'm sending the picture to the to one of the people who were instrumental in being able to send the picture in the first place. Exactly. For the young person that's coming along in STEM, how would you encourage them at this point? Because we see where it's going, the new wave of technology, especially when we talk about Africa, uh, West Africa, East Africa, South Africa, North Africa, Central Africa, the importance of technology now, because we see what you were able to do coming from Kumasi, Ghana, and changing the world with this. So there's another Thomas Mensah somewhere out here. How would you inspire or encourage that person? Well, basically I'll tell them, go to Silicon Valley of Ghana and enroll. Mm. I'm training 100 youth in Silicon Valley. The government is paying me to do that. Okay. Both in Accra, Kofi Annan ICT Center, and Kumasi. Yeah. I'm training another 100. So you go there and enroll. Because the kind of things I'm teaching, I have 30 professors working with me, world famous professors. Hmm. So you come, we'll teach you. We'll teach you about drones. All right, let's, look. let's take a look here. Let's take a look. So, drones. So, your technology is instrumental in these drones yes. that we have flying and yes. capturing all these shots. Yes. Yes. Because as you see, you know, in one of the videos that we sent out there, I designed drones for the Pentagon in the United States. Wow. I see. I'm, I'm, I'm looking through the book. <laughs> yeah, and so when Pentagon, mm -hmm. I have one drone. The drone application is using all the Pentagon platforms. And you designed it. I designed it. I developed it. All right. You know, it's amazing to hear this because we don't get to hear the backstory. We don't get to hear this side of it. You know, we just use the technology. Yes. And, and that's all we know. Yes. But to know a human being is a part of it. Now, did you get the recognition? Now, I've, I've heard part of the recognition, but when we think about this, is your name right there along with uh, your other American counterparts? My white guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll let you say it. <laughs> now it's becoming. Okay. And luckily, since I'm the one that can narrate a link to modern day, mm -hmm. smartphones, you're all happy about it. Okay. You know, they were recognized, they went to the White House and all that stuff. But right now, I'm the one leading the story. That's right. We want you to get, we want the world to know. Yeah, leading the story. Who you are. Yeah. I'm also, also one of the few guys that has developed or invented the, elect the vehicle guidance technology. Hmm. In so the way, GPS or, or, or the, huh? is it GPS? The vehicle guidance technology, what is that exactly? It's more than that. All right. It's Basically, the missile, we're talking about missiles. Okay. 
the missile as a laser, as a camera at the tip of. So the missile flies, taking target pictures, and sending it real time on the fiber optic to the pilot. Right, right, right. So the pilot clicks on it, and if Saddam Hussein's tank move, the missile can fire hmm. and hit. I'm one of only black with such a pattern. pattern. So you have the patent for that yes. as well? Yes. I see robotics training. I see how, I see your book. Now let's talk about your book a little bit because sure. that's what you uh, want to share with everyone. And we'll talk about how people can actually get your book. What is the premise of your book? The premise is simple. I want every black person in the world to realize that the right stuff comes in black too. Hmm. Not only in white. Okay. The astronauts, the Apollo ones, they're actually all white men. They call them the right stuff hmm. when they went to space. And in the book, I'm saying the right stuff also comes in. That was Jay. The right stuff is you. The right stuff is well, in the book. Mandela is the right stuff. Sit in prison all this time, came out, became president. You know, Mandela is the right stuff. Mm -hmm. Dr. King is the right stuff. So the right stuff comes in black. Very, very, very important. It is so important because. Um, I'm seeing in my travels that a lot of people don't believe that even in 2022. Yes. They believe that white is right. Yes. And brown is wrong. Yes. And, and they're thinking that, you know, there's a superiority. There are a lot of people who are brown. Yes. Who are actually believing that white is better and, yes. and all of that. But then when we sit down, that's why it's so important for us to know you. Yes. And your contribution to our everyday lives. Yes. To know that, yes, it can come in our complexions yes. and it can come from the continent of Africa, yes. from Kumasi, Ghana, yes. and it doesn't have to be uh, coming from Europe only. Yeah, the Europe section, yeah. the concept of security and all that, because the textbooks continue as we speak today. The textbook shows all inventions coming from one thing. Mm. Thomas Edison, light bulb. Bell Labs, where I work, ATT Bell Labs. You know, uh, 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 the bell telephone, copper wire. You can't send pictures. My system, my system, send pictures. But that's what they are talking about. So a textbook should be changed and show black people who are doing things. That's right. That's right. And that, that's why we want everybody to share this video. Because when the more people who learn and understand what it says to our children, is that I can too. Yes. I don't have to take a back seat to anyone. Nobody. I have the ability and just what, and it also speaks to the influence of your father. Yes, yes. Because your father sat you on his lap and yes. read the newspaper to you. Yeah. And, wow. and, and who even knew, you know, you don't know, those developmental years yeah. would become all of these patents exactly. and would change the world. Yes. And that's literally what your technology has done. Yes. So that's, uh, so this book, where can we get this book? Is this all? Well, the book, first of all, I'll give you the color book. Okay. Directly where you can share. It. Okay. But it's on Amazon. Amazon, okay. It's black and white, you know. Yes. But I'll give you the color I'll book. get the color book, there we go. You see me, Barack Obama, shaking hands in color. Okay. You see me with all the presidents, the Clinton, all in color. So this is literally your, in, when I think about legacy, your legacy transcends family. Yes. Your legacy transcends uh, geographical borders. Yes. Your legacy is global, yes. and for for humankind, yes, will likely be eternal as long as humankind exists. Yes, there are six billion people on the internet because of this technology. And when you think about Facebook, Instagram, yes. Uh, YouTube, TikTok. Yes. Uh, we got five rockets. Nothing. TikTok will happen. Wow. So that the inspiration alone, and and I and I hope that we as a people, whether in Africa or part of the African diaspora, will really appreciate 
your contributions and yes. celebrate you the way that we celebrate yes. Thomas Edison yes. and, 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 and the others. Exactly. But, it's, but for some people, it's hard for them to conceptualize okay. someone who looks like them creating all of this yes. in their minds, even as they're watching this right now. Yeah. They're going to go search just to be sure, yeah. you know, that we're not, you know, this, that it's legitimate. Yeah, Google Thomas Mensah. Yeah, that's all, that's all you have to do. Google Dr. Thomas Mensah and you'll see his face and you'll see his personality. His personality comes out in a smile and you'll see him right there. And, and that's why this interview is so important. That's why. It's, important. it's one of the most important interviews I've done. The next interview I'll do with Oprah Winfrey. All right. Interview. Because... As you have heard, I am the guy that's doing the World Boxing Tournament. So you're bringing the World Boxing here? Tournament here in Ghana. And it's already in the works? Everything? Yes, I've worked on it for the past one year. Oh, wow. People work on it in the United States. I have 10 boxers. Coming to Ghana? Coming to Ghana. When is this going to happen? 2023, uh, uh, January. January 2023. I'm going to be there. Yeah, you be there, man. You I will be man, there. Man. I will be there. I yeah, have to be there. Beyonce, everybody. Oh, they're coming. Okay. Oh, everybody will be here. Okay. Oh, I'm doing two events in okay. Kumasi because we're two for we'll say two to my friend. Okay. So I'm doing one in Kumasi. Okay. Two events. And I'm doing the main event. Three. Three days in Accra. January 2023. Yes. World Boxing. Yes. Dr. Thomas Mensa. Yes. Is, you're behind all of this. I'm behind. You know, and it's going to improve the economy of that. Because because of COVID, as you see, yes. all the year of return, you know, it's, it's gone down. Nobody's coming. But now, World Boxing. World Boxing. Yeah. Everybody's going to come. That's right. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I will have MJ, Michael Jordan, Come down here in Shiva. Oh, wow. Big time. Well, I, I want to be ringside with all of this. You are. You're coming, man. <laughs> I'll be ringside. Coming, I'll man. sit right there next to MJ. Yeah. That's how you do it. Yes. <laughs> now, tell Oprah, because Oprah Winfrey is the one who gave me the idea. Okay. To bring Black Disney World to Ghana. Hmm. He said, well, put it in Ghana. I agree. Come and put it in America. Put it in Ghana. Put it in Ghana. I agree. So we are going to do it. There's a technology piece to it. By the way. Okay. Yeah. People say, oh, boxing. There's a technology piece to it. I have a museum in there, too. Whereby, when you are in the museum, you see all these boxes and all these snakes. You click or you click on somebody. Name. His video starts playing. So that's the, how the technology fiber yes. optics once again. Yes. If somebody's name, you know, whether it's uh, uh, Christian Leonardo, mm. see him score. Okay. I'm bringing all those guys. It's a big, big deal. I, I know it is because I know everything that you've done has been a big deal. Yeah. And and because of that. One, everyone should come and pay attention to exactly what's going yes. on come January 2023. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to this event, do you plan yeah. have other events planned in addition to the boxing? Oh, yeah. Because technically speaking, boxing is the main event. You know, Muhammad Ali, Fraser. Joe Fraser fight. Foreman, all of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I sent a picture to you. Okay. We have it here. A group is working with me putting together a QVC type show. Okay. That group, the key guy there, but he used to work for NBC. You know, NBC did the Olympic Games in Atlanta. I mm -hmm. was there. 96? Yeah, I was there. Wired all the stadium with fiber optic so that I can broadcast. Oh, wow. And do the same thing here. Oh. They also have UK uh, television. You know, I'm negotiating the international television rights. Okay. And they are helping me. Al Jazeera. Okay. NBC. BBC. CBC. You name it. BBC. All. All eyes should be on Ghana. Let's put it that way. All eyes. It's going to be here. 
Well, I'm excited for you for this new, although there's the technology component that comes with it, it's definitely a new lane for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a new day. We worked in quiet for one year, putting it together. About 100 people working for me on three continents. Hmm. You got it. There, there's, uh, there's a lot of wisdom that you have. And, and, and I'm hearing it, is it you, the, the fiber optics is one part, but I, I can even see how your personal philosophy and how you operate ties into even that aspect of it. Because when you talk about putting together teams yes. and build, you, you couldn't do it all by yourself. No, 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 no. So 100, you, people, so 100, you, 100 people, teams, and then it all works. And collectively what that does is it shines a different light on Africa and Ghana in particular. It changes a narrative. Because now they're able to see the same technology and all the different things that they're used to in the West. Now they're bringing it here, yes. but using the best of what's of, of yes. those of who are here. Yes. And that's the part of what, what you're what you're offering at the universities and you're yes. talking about the training. Yes. Where do you see the, the future for technology and for young Ghanaians? Where do you see this going for them? in Ghana. Oh, they should all go to Silicon Valley of Ghana and enroll. And I'm training a hundred people in Kofi Allen Center, a hundred people in Kumasi, yeah, because of Ufutu. I'm training all these guys, you know. So they should go there and they will learn the latest mm -hmm. drones. I have a drone game. The drone five, five meters. And instead of just farming and helping farming and all that, Five meters, we had a spectrometer that can find minerals underneath the earth. From a drone? Yes. And you developed that? I developed that. Wow. I mean, it's fascinating because I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a technical person in the sense of, but I'm, in my mind, I'm trying to figure out, well, how does someone even think to take a drone to discover minerals you know, it's, it's like that's the thought process to say, well, who would even think to find minerals in the ground from a drone? But that's your gift and yeah, that's your contribution. Yes. 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 You want that in for development. Yes. So you got to find them. And, and, and to be able to get properly compensated for exactly. them once, once they're found. Yeah. <laughs> I have worked my financiers to Ghana. Mm -hmm. I'm funding $5 billion okay. on the high speed train. Kumasi to Accra, one hour, Kumasi to China. Oh, wow. Four hours. I'm founding it. Also, you heard about the flooding problem? Yes, I have. We are going to solve it forever. I've seen it. Yeah. I'm putting 10 billion into that. We are bringing concrete pipes, 10 feet high, mm -hmm. concrete pipes. You can walk in it. And that will channel the water. The water straight to the pipes. Hmm. We design. Me and if my financiers, we are bringing it here. It's not just the gutters. <laughs> no, right. no, no, no. So the front road areas were well, putting the pipes there. That's what US uses, Dubai uses, UAE uses, America uses, you know. And then the UK, France. Everywhere. Yeah. So you don't flood over it. Because I've I've seen the floods. I've been around the floods. So I, <laughs> I I know. I was like, wow, this is this is serious. What would you say? to those who are watching right now and they're going to learn and they're going to research more about you what would you want your lasting legacy to be as they're learning about dr thomas Mensah, what would you want it to be well they say he changed the world yes you know it's one of the top black man from ghana who changed the world if you look at that interview uh what you call it, uh, uh, I just had, you know, on Joy News. Mm. You know, he's a top black person that changed the world forever, mentioning me in the same breath as Christian Barnard, the doctor that did the first heart transplant mm. in South Africa, on the same breath. This has changed the world. Everybody should know it. And everyone will. Because we, those of us who have platform, will continue to make people aware. Thank you. And we will make sure that your legacy is honored. 
Thank you. And that we make people understand <laughs> who you are. Thank you. Because for me, again, it's an honor. And I'm glad that I've had the opportunity to meet you and spend time with you and, and sit down and be in this space. Well, everyone, we're here talking to Dr. Thomas Mensah and he has offered so many words of wisdom. As we get ready to wrap this up, what would you want to share with the audience? Your platform, take it away. All, I'm, all I want to say is that right stuff comes in black tree. Later, when my friend comes, he's put a tattoo on polo shirts. Now make sure you get one. All right. The right stuff comes in black tree. The right stuff comes in black tree. Sending one to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. This is serious because you are the right stuff. The right stuff also comes in. It's not like the white astronaut take me all over the world. In France, you call them the tough desiro. Mm. The tough desiro exists in Ghana on noir. I speak French. Uh, I was going to say, I, I, the right stuff <laughs> comes in black. So that's how you say it in French? Yes. How do you say it in um, tree? Tree. Yes. Go for a year and near my cashier. I be before you. I be before. Bet me a year. Near my cashier. She said, Dr. Mensa. You heard that. So you heard in all different languages English, French, and tree. And that way, all of those different audiences are able to get it to francophone countries, those who are African voilà. in francophone countries, oui. understanding, and then those who are in anglophone countries, and then those who are here in, I, I'm assuming you sent you from Kumasi, are you yes. Ashanti? Are you Ashanti? Yes. I, Kumasi kind of told me. <laughs> and, and so, again, everyone, make sure that you follow Dr. Mensa. make sure you Google him, Make sure we're going to have all of the details. You're going to see videos. We're going to make sure that you understand exactly who he is. And we're going to continue to acknowledge him and recognize his accomplishments and his contributions to all of what we enjoy today. And knowing that uh, that the right stuff comes in black too. Cool. And in so many of us, once we understand that and understand who we are and where we descend from and what we can do, then we're unstoppable. And so Dr. Mensa is just another example of that unstoppable internal fortitude and, and want to acknowledge your father. Thank you. So thank you. thank you for joining us. Until next time, you know what to do. Subscribe, like, share. Maximum Impact with Jay Campbell. Take care. Open up your eyes and see Adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari. And from there, we're gonna to go to Ethiopia. And then we're gonna Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred, but it's all done on a children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity, they begin to learn more, and hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and its many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do and as they're doing it, it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation and they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity. They're actually able to see 
positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora, as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa, and they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny.